Hello and welcome back to one of our videos where we will be discussing um, you know, another technique that you can use uh, as data analyst, data scientist, or data engineer. Um, today we're going to be talking about a problem you might be asked to either have to solve for work or possibly also for an interview. Uh, specifically, we're going to be talking about rolling sums or um, rolling totals it, it, it basically, or running totals. It basically just refers to adding uh, the current value to the next value to the next value. So, so your sum is getting bigger as time goes on. So what we're going to do is we have this table. It's, it's a really quick fact table called F food transactions um, in that table or food truck transactions. In that table, we have a food truck ID, um, the paid amount that they were given that day, uh, the date that that profit was essentially made, and then a, a date stamp um, just because Typically, just as good practice, you should always have a date stamp. Again, this is a really simple table. You'd also have, um, in a real fact table, a lot more uh, IDs, um, probably to describe you know, the type of food truck, uh, locations, et cetera. But this is just to show the problem of finding a rolling sum. So how would you do this? And I want, to take you, I want you to take a moment and think about how would you find a rolling sum? You probably already know how to find a sum, right? Let's, you'd probably just have to say, you know, select uh, food truck, underscore ID, um, and sum, uh, paid amount. Um, and then you can just say from, you know, this table over here. And you're gonna group by food truck ID. But this will only give you the aggregate for the food truck ID. Um, you could add in, you know, the date here, the date of purchased, um, date of purchase, um, and also add this into the group by, But this still doesn't, this still is not going to give you the response you're going to want, right? Like, so if we were to run this, let's say, we might have some errors in here, but uh, we don't. Uh, you're going to see that this just sums it up by the date, and so you're really just getting the same value for each of these days, and it's not going to give you a rolling sum. So it doesn't, that doesn't solve the problem. So how do we? And, and here's the easiest way. And um, for those of you who don't know, we're going to use an analytic function or a window function is sometimes what they're called. Um, so here's what we'll do. I'm just going to go below. So this is this style right here, this first row, is what we call an analytic function. It's where we use this over clause. Um, and then you have to have an order by. You don't need this partition. But this partition is very important in this course um, because this partition by basically breaks it up by the food truck ID. In a weird way, this is kind of a group by statement, this partition by, but it's breaking it up by food truck ID. And then allowing you to have one for each of these days of purchase. And that's where this whole thing actually causes, creates this rolling effect. By doing some um, paid amount over this whole partition, what's actually happening is it's adding up the value um, for each of these days as it goes on. So if you were to run this basically, you'll see that, you know, okay, for food truck ID one, you'll first have 1052 and then 1062, which if we look up here above, that is the uh, sum of these two values, right? So on the second day, we have the sum of the, these two values. And on the third day, we have a 166, which is the sum of these three values. And so we have this rolling sum and that was super easy to do, right? Like this didn't take any real, not too much thought. And, and if you don't know what an analytic function is, you should really look it up. It's probably one of, the most useful skills you'll learn once you get all the basic skills down for SQL. Um, you can do things like add row numbers, rank things, uh, and a various allotment of other things. And, and it becomes very useful for problem solving. So we'll, we'll keep using it just to show you different tricks you can kind of do using um, analytic functions. But here comes the problem. So here, here's the problem. So you've done this, right? Like this is super easy. And, and let's say you're given an interview where, with this question and this is the answer you provide. Like, hey, here you go, here's my answer. Your interviewer actually might not be that happy with you because this, this was almost too easy, right? It, it shows that you know it. And so in a weird way, that's good. But also at the same time, it doesn't show that you kind of understand how data works. Um, so the question becomes, hey, what happens if I told you you can't do this, right? What happens if I told you you can't use this statement? You have to find some other way to do this, to, to calculate a rolling sum. Can you find any good ways to do it? I'll give you guys a moment because, you know, it does take a moment. I've actually uh, 
had had moments like this where like you know and this is where i started to learn like you use analytic functions and you use them so often that you can solve so many problems that then eventually you go into an interview and use it and they almost don't want you to use it um and, and it's always sometimes more just to see how your mind will work it's not that you won't use it in real life it's just that they want to see hey can you could you do it if it didn't exist also some data systems like MySQL or things like that don't even have access to these functions. Uh, most of them do, most of them are either getting, in their new versions they're getting updated or something like that, but in some cases they don't have this. All right, if you haven't figured it out yet, here's one way, there's, there's, there's a couple ways you can do it, but here's one. Um, so what you can do is do a self join. And in this self join, what you can do is basically right here. This is this is the this is the kicker. Is you're going to say on the date of purchase, I want to get everything from one date of purchase where it is bigger than or equal to the second date of purchase where you're self joining to. So can anyone kind of see what this is going to do? So take a moment to try to think about what the data will look like, and and that's always kind of a key step. Is like what does the data need to look like? And we're going to kind of take a look at this. And this actually doesn't do the complete rolling sum yet. So just if you haven't figured out yet, this is just step one for this. And I'm not even going to go through the whole thing, but I'm going to show you that this is halfway there, pretty much already done for you. So if we if we run this query, what we'll see. So if you saw um, in this, in what I'm calling forward, T1, T2 date. So this is basically um, a side by side. So you can kind of see how this data plays out. So basically what you see is, so here, day one, uh, for January 1, right? We have this value, we have the paid amount. So this is this is great, right? We have the first value. Okay, the second one is where the trick is. Okay, can we get the second amount? And how are we gonna sum them? And then because we do this greater than or equal to, well, we join on this and, oh, well, this is this is less than this value, so we're gonna, we're gonna join it there. And this is equal to this value, so we're gonna join it there. And now the second, the second table we join to, this T2, the paid amount, we have these two values. And now we could technically sum on this T1 value for this, T2, for this T1 date and the T2 um, paid amount, if, if you can kind of see this. So, so paid amount right here is actually T2, and uh, we're gonna use this first column. And then again, same thing for three, if we look at three for January 3rd, we have three values because, well, January 3rd is bigger than 2018, 0101, it's bigger than 0102, and it's bigger than 03. So now what you're seeing is you're going to get all these values that you can start summing up. Um, you could group on this, or you could group by this column, and you can sum on this column. And now you you essentially have your rolling, um, your rolling sum, your rolling total, running total, however you want to call it. And so now you've done it. Um, there's also another way you can do it where you kind of do a sum um, and a a join in that sum and it gets really kind of wonky because basically every time it's going to call that it's it's, it's not very performant um, but that also comes to here where this is not necessarily a great way only because um, if you have billions and billions of rows and you're doing this join and depending on what granularity you're doing it on this could become very expensive very quickly and so this is not necessarily the best way to do it only in the sense of it depends on limitations it depends on design um, one thing we're going to kind of talk about a lot on this channel is design. Uh, in this case, you know, if you only have even, again, a billion rows, not a lot of rows. So if you have a billion rows, and depending on how much you're doing at a time, it's, it might not be bad. This might be fine um, to process. But if you have, you know, a terabyte or two terabytes of data that you want to do this on, this might be a problem. And that kind of brings us to the, the final kind of approach to this, which we won't show, but we'll talk about. And, and from a design point of view, what you'll probably end up doing is you'll probably end up aggregating day by day in an aggregate table. So you might have this on a raw level, right? Like you might have um, just the date and the paid amount on a raw level. But if you're reporting on this constantly every day and you need it to be fast, what you're probably going to do is just aggregate it automatically and have a column that you're constantly appending or a table you're constantly appending with a new rolling sum for all of these people. You know, you don't have to wait all day to give this person their value, um, especially if, you know, you've got, 200,000, a million customers, you want it to be fast, and whatever your table you've got it in is probably very fast and very uh, quick. And you're not aggregating that, table, aggregating that data as soon as you're calling it, you're, that data is pre-aggregated. And we'll talk about that in the next video, kind of aggregates and how to use that um, with a similar problem. But uh, for that, uh, we'll, or for now, we're gonna kind of close off this video. So thank you so much for watching. 
um, rolling sums and problem solving. And, and if you've got some problems that you want me to solve using SQL, Python, or anything else, you know, feel free to send me a, uh, a request and I'll be happy to uh, answer for you. Thank you.